Mike Nesbitt, you've come out to the European Parliament. Why have you come out here? What's the purpose of, of your visit? Well, there are two reasons for the timing. One is the debate today uh, on the Northern Ireland peace process here in Brussels. The second is the talks that are ongoing, convened by the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland back in Belfast. So it's important for unionism to make sure that uh, our position is understood and accepted, not just by the parties who are in the negotiation, but by the other institutions and countries that have influence, countries like the United States and institutions like the European Union and its parliament. What's your message then today to the European Parliament, to MEPs from across Europe and the European Union? Our message is that unionism is serious about doing a deal. Uh, the talks cover a wide range of things, uh, from the budget to welfare reform to institutional reform up at Stormont, through to the, the legacy issues of parades, dealing with the past, uh, and the flag issue. We are serious about dealing with all of those because the status quo is not acceptable anywhere across the piece. It is such a large agenda, though, we feel you have to sequence it uh, and for us, if you can't get the money right, there's not much point discussing anything else. So the budget has to be at the front of these talks. You say the budget at the front of the talks. Would you be pre prepared to, s to accept a deal that sorted out the money issues, the budget, even if some of those other issues, the legacy issues and so forth, are, are, are left uh, for, a, for a future date? I, no, I think you sequence, and that doesn't mean that you do the budget and then you walk away. You do the budget, you agree it, and that achieves two things. You put momentum uh, into the talks process, uh, a positive momentum to go and grapple with the next issue, and you also send a message out to the public who are getting pretty cynical about our inability to agree that actually we have agreed on something, it's something very important, and we're sticking in there and we're taking the next bite out of the elephant. Theresa Villiers has talked about an, an intensification needed uh, to kind of make the, the talks become more intensive, a next phase perhaps. Do you agree with that? How, what, happened, what needs to happen in order to achieve that? The talks to date have achieved nothing except that the talks have happened and to some extent that is a positive. But if we're going to take it to somewhere really meaningful, we do have to intensify it. We have to move beyond bilaterals uh, and have formats where more than one local party is sitting around the table uh, because only that way can you move parties off their, their holding position out of their comfort zone and see what is actually possible in terms of fresh and imaginative agreements. Do you see progress being possible on some of these uh, legacy issues, given that uh, you know, the HAST wasn't able to, to reach a deal, the DUP didn't join, join a, a deal on that one? Has failed because I think that the proposals were not sound proposals. Uh, it's not because the Ulster Unionist Party does not want to do a deal on the legacy issues. We don't like the status quo in terms of the flying of the Union flag, nor do we like the status quo in terms of controversial parades or indeed dealing with the past. They all have to be dealt with. We need to be imaginative. We need to show some generosity of spirit in, in how we deal with this. And if everybody's prepared to do that round the table, we will do deals which will help Northern Ireland move forward.